What's going on, everyone? It's Bales, and welcome back to another episode of AFL Fantasy Head Ted, where you put two players up against one another to see who we'd be picking out of the two. This is episode 14 of the series. If you haven't checked out the other 13 episodes, make sure you do. Great episodes and great guests. And we're continuing on that line with another great guest to talk about a couple of Valley midfielders. He is uh, one hell of a coach. He's finished top 100 multiple times. Uh, he's a legend uh, of the pod pod as well. It is the Stato. Stato, how you doing, mate? I'm doing very well. Bales can't complain. We're talking about fantasy footy. That's a good end to a day. Yeah, no, exactly right. And uh, a couple of uh, mid price midfielders that were well, sort of undervalued uh, midfielders, I probably should say, not uh, mid prices in Cam Guthrie and Ollie Wines we're going to be speaking about today. So very interesting discussion. Well, obviously, we had the episode with uh, Calvin, with Matt Crouch and Josh Simpkin. So we might be able to touch on those two with these two as well. But let's get stuck in. To the first play, which is Cam Guthrie being the more, more expensive play out of the two. So, Stato, why should people be looking at Cam Guthrie in their sides in 2024? Well, firstly, on a broad thing, obviously we've got a unique challenge this year and we're all trying to find the way we're going to work through those uh, buy rounds, round two, three, five and six. So you've got a unique challenge. So finding the way that you're going to have a really good 18 on field for the four of the first six rounds um, could really set you up for a good year. So uh, like always, we're looking for value. You, you don't want to pay anyone at the, uh, the highest point. If you're spending a lot of money, you want to see the potential growth so they don't lose like Jack Bacray, um you know, 150k before you know it, and realising you've you're on a sinking ship, uh, as we did last year. So you're looking for that value, and and potentially looking at finding how do I get close to having 18 premiums on the field come round two ready to go. So I'm jumping ahead. So the way to do that is is look for the value, and the two players we're talking about today have definitely got that. They're well below um, what their potential bests are. Our challenge will be whether they can deliver their best. Now, I'm not talking career high. I think we need to be a little bit more sensible. But why Cam Guthrie? Cam Guthrie? Um, as we saw, Geelong were desperately looking for midfield options last year. They won the flag in 2022. Uh, they had a bit of a drop-off last year. So I'm unsure if you're aware of the number bales, but do you know how many players they pl- they had CBAs in the Geelong Football Club last year? I've heard the number a few times. It's it's a, it's a lot. I can't think off the top of my head, but it's uh, it, I know it's a lot more than the, the average team in the AFL, that's for sure. It's 30. It's, it's more <laughs> players than allowed to take the field in a team in any given week. 30 yeah. players had CBAs. Well, obviously, they're trying to find the mix. Life without Selwood was obviously a little bit challenging. We've got an ageing um, Patrick Dangerfield who can give us a bit of a good burst, but let's face it, he's probably more of a uh, uh, a forward player that can give a little bit of inspiration uh, into that midfield, seeing he is ageing. We know Tom Atkins moved in there, but he's a workhorse He's not the he's not going to drive uh, out of that midfield. They've been searching for that. So they look for players last year. They they tried Maxi Holmes. Maxi only had twenty eight percent CBA. So they gave him a good go, but at the end of the season they really dropped away. So uh, his last uh, six games, his percentage CBAs were 14, 5, 22, 31, 6, 13 and 7. So it was really dropping away. Uh, Sorry, you're not quite um, the one we're looking for. So re-enter Cam Guthrie. Um, He'll be, and the club have made it clear straight um, from the start, that he'll be uh, inside that midfield mix and he probably becomes the leader. I think I'll be surprised if Tom Atkins probably drops out. I think he stays in there. And then they've got two solid bodies that they'll filter through the young kids to give them the opportunity. So we're actually going to see him go back to his good old days of around 70% CBAs. We know he's never been a player that's had massive time on ground, um, but I think we'll see him get back to the high 90s, hopefully touch a tonne. So his best year 
was 2021, where he averaged 109.9. Obviously, uh, a constant CBA player. Averaged over 120 with the the 1.25. He actually had 84.8, which we know sort of was around that mark of about 107. Uh, had a little drop away in 2022. Um, so the premiership year, he was at 95.8. But remember, Joel Selwood uh, was the main lifter for that season, his last one. And it was just injury, come off round six injured uh, last year, but he's had a full preseason. He's fighting fit. So there's upside in him. So he gets a discount uh, on his 86 average um, and he comes in priced at 762. So I can see him having a, a 95 to 100 average. I'm thinking that's about the mark. And that's perfect because he plays all the way through to his buy uh, later on in the season. And you've got another premium player, agreed, not uber premium, but another premium player. If you get four of these at 700,000 that uh, have shown premium scores and deliver and have got the role, uh, you're getting four for the price of three. Exactly right, yeah, and and I like the price point as well. Seven sixty two is 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 a good price point to to look at. I think that a lot of structures actually work having one or two of these players uh, in your midfield. So um, it'll be very very interesting. Um, we so we we Guthrie obviously speak about obviously he's, he's had a few injuries in the past. He's had a good preseason, and obviously he's got that buyer later in. Um, are, is there any concern with the with his body at all for you, or are you sort of just if he stays fit? right way through pre-season, you'd be happy to launch into him round one? Uh, look, obviously having an injury when you're 30, as he was last year, he rolls into the season at 31. There's that little question mark. But, look, he's been a player that has generally always been available. We had an injury in 2018 and an injury last year. So other than that, he's been uh, a player that is fit, ready to go when selected. So if we remember what his career was, he was a bit of a bit player, then he was a bit of a tagger, then he was a halfback flanker, and then he went into the to the genuine CBAs in 2020, and that's when he shot up. So he made a major difference from that point when he got the role and the opportunity. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, I, I just thought that people might say he's injury prone, so I thought I'd raise it that. Question there, um, but we'll move over to the other side of the coin here and talk talk a little bit about Ollie Ollie Wines um, of Port Adelaide. So uh, last year, just unfortunately, just wasn't um, a very good year for him. Unfortunately, just uh, averaged just a seventy seven point seven. He dealt with um, I can't exactly remember what injury it was uh, in the preseason, but dealt with pretty much an injury throughout the whole year. So he's really sort of interrupted um, for the whole season. Um, wasn't able to show any of his best. Obviously, former Brownlow medalist as well. And we know for a fact that he's, he's averaged on in the past. I'm just pick, pulling up his numbers here in terms of his average in past seasons as well because he's been a guy that has been pretty reliable in terms of averaging that 95-plus. So you have a look at his career average here. So he's got, he went from pretty much his first year, went 72.9. But from 2014 onwards, he didn't dip below 90, 92 um, it was his 92.1 was his last, that was 2014. But every other season was over that. Obviously, 112 average in 2021 when he won the Brownlow medal. Um, and then obviously 97.8 in 2022. But all the way here yeah, down at 75.2 last year, that's obviously including finals averages as well. Um, I believe he's priced at an average of 77.7. So, yeah, just unfor- just didn't quite hit the straps and obviously with the introduction of of uh connor rosie and and um zach butters he was the main guy a few years ago whereas now you've got those two in there obviously horn francis is there as well will and drew runs through so there's a lot more bodies running through there instead of ollie wines being the main guy but the two positives with him though right so obviously he's priced cheaply for us um at seven hundred and one thousand. but i think the good two good things for him so one is that he doesn't have an opening round buy um, the second part is that he's got a nice early fixture to start. Obviously, West Coast round one is is nice and goes into Richmond, Melbourne, Essendon, and then a few more good fixtures. But the other thing is he's got that round 13 buy, which we've been talking about. And a guy like this is one of those players that would be perfect for that buy. You have a guy like him, a guy like Heath Chapman. If you've got guys a little bit cheaper, you can trade them at their buy 
and then you can bring in a player coming off their round 12 buy. So there's, I think, a lot of positives with starting Ollie Wines. Obviously, the one um, caveat to that is that there's just that he's not the number one guy in there anymore. He's the probably the, maybe the number three guy in there or maybe the number four, number four guy in there um, behind those three. So, so I'll go, to, I'll go to you for Wines here. So, obviously, um, both him and Guth, Guthrie aren't actually selected by many coaches at the moment. So Guthrie is only selected in 3.05% of sides at time recording, and Ollie Wines is currently in 2.17% of sides. So a couple of pods here, but with Wines, as I mentioned, with the uh, good buy there, um, doesn't have an early buy, it's got a good fixture. Is is that sort of some good ticks in the box for Wines, especially with that that round 13 buy that I've, not, I've heard you speak on the pod pod about? Yeah, look, at the end of the day, I think you just got to wipe clear 2023, remove it from your memory, uh, he missed the bulk of the, the preseason. He actually played through injury throughout last year. It's a couple of periods where they thought they were just picking up and they were making an announcement. All right, Wines, he feels good. He's back in the midfield this week as a permanent basis. Um, and, look, if if you've got a player, especially in the draft league, but if you've got a player that's actually injured but still played the 23 games, you've got to go... This guy's a tough nut. He's just working through it, trying to do the best for the team. But his body wasn't prepared the right way, um, nor was he fit and ready to go to deliver the best Ollie Wines he could be. So I think you just remove that and go, well, automatically there's 20 points upside. Now, the other thing, what we need to note, he he's very much a player that's got one role, and that's the inside mid. So when you say he's not going to be one, he's going to be three or four, he's actually going to be one. He he is the one that is just permanently there um, besides the little breaks from from the bench. The reality is is the butters and the rosé can be so damaging at other areas of the ground. Uh, I can't imagine them not having a strong presence in the CBA, but if you're going to be rotating someone at at half-forward flank, do you send Ollie Wines or do you send Zach Butters or do you send yeah, Rosie? Um, the the end of the day, it's the other two. Um, the question mark and influence will be is is Ollie Wines and the franchise being uh, Horn Francis, are they a little bit too similar? And if those two are actually playing a majority of CBAs, and I think Horn Francis will take a bit of time to build his tank. So I think you remain around the 60% CBAs or so. What is the point of Willem Drew? So you get to that model and going, he's the third that same same. Now, if you look back in the historic CBAs uh, when Boak and Gray were spending a fair bit of time, both Ollie Wines and Drew were in there quite often. So I'm starting to think, does Willem Drew just be that, the the fourth fish, which actually gets a little bit of time, is starting on the bench, maybe do a role when they want to concentrate. I think Port Adelaide should discuss, do they want to attack and win the premiership or they want to try and defend? It's an interesting point to to look at. Where's their next step? Um, But I think if you look at um, if the top four is Wines, Rosie, Butters, Horn, Francis, and probably in that order, um, if you average the CBA time, all of them can have 75%. Now, we know that's not a reality, but I think Wines get 70 and then the rest are sharing from there and you add Drew in and you might add a little bit of flair here and there. But, look, he's going to be a man and the club's made it very clear. Um, he's back in CBAs. We know he's training. We've got our spies on the track, one of them, Louis, um, seeing and he's been talking about this for about two months Wines fighting fit. He's uh, done the full preseason. He's got over the troubles from last year, and he's ready to resubmit himself. I, I don't think we see the one ten again. Um, if he gets a hundred, that's a dream. But he's that extra. So talk about having four of these players around this price. Um, people have got spending a bit more money for people that don't have them as much improvement. They've got a rookie, which could be a huge risk and three premiums, where if you go with these type, you get four premiums. And they're playing, importantly, um, that extra premium on the field when everyone else is another one short, come round two, three, five, and six. Yeah, yeah, and I I like that as well. I know that uh, 
Ridge was talking about that on an episode as well, playing that extra uh, midfielder potentially and going a little bit lighter in defence and forward line could be a, a strategy. And obviously, if you have a couple of these guys in, in your midfield, this could be a, um, a, a very good strategy to not only make cash, but score points throughout those early yeah, buys as well. Course. And as, as you mentioned, with the obviously Wines being injured for last year, we, we've seen players not have pre-seasons come into the season that they just, they just don't really get to the race as much of the season. Like we saw like Walsh last year, Obviously, delayed starts of the back uh, surgery and that. He, he started, got some hundreds early, but then didn't score 100 for the back half of the year. We saw a couple of years ago when Paddy Cripps was injured for for a couple of years. Yeah. He came in, had a full preseason. He went and obviously won the Brownlow medal and went big. So we've just seen how important preseasons are to these players. And, and yeah, if they get a full preseason like Ollie Wines and, and Cam Guthrie as well, to be fair, uh, like they're both having, then that's where they can really elevate themselves up to that, as you said, that 95 around the, around the average and be really good picks for us. So... The time has come, though. We'll pick between the two, and then also we'll have a tiny little bit of a conversation after we pick the two. But uh, Stato, out of Cam Guthrie and Ollie Wines, which one are you picking in this head-to-head battle? Uh, Wines. Um, now, I think Guthrie's probably got more chance of, um, because they're sort of thin and young kids, to be the main CBA guy. But Wines, um, he, he's just the right age. Even when he's been unfit, he still played 23 games. Uh, he's at a cheaper price point, so you save another 61k, uh, which it all adds up if you do it on uh, 10 players, mate. Um, yep. So you always got to think about that, the price point. I, I think he's got the better ceiling and, and the more chance to get back to that uh, 100 points. And look, Guthrie, to be leading the way, et cetera, might do some tagging roles instead of just be the, the main ball getter. So... Um, look, I'll, I'll go Wines. I just think it's a bit of a smarter move and a bit more of a guarantee. And to be fair, did Geelong really tell us the truth? <laughs> no, no, not normally. Um, so I, with the fact that they ran 30 players through there also leads me to Ollie Wines. I think, yeah, I, ju- I just trust Port Adelaide um, more in terms of their yeah. midfield mix. I don't think there's as many guys that will run through there. As you said, Wines is, is one of those top couple. Um, and you made a good point that he couldn't even be the number one guy in there because... He's that inside midfielder. So, and I like the fact he's got that round 13 by as a good uh, player. If he's going along at that 9,500 average, you can trade him to a player coming off the round 12 by. And then also the fact he's got a good early run. And, and I know Louis was uh, chatting to me about it and said, uh, players have got a good early run. Um, that's exactly what you want. They want to make cash quickly. Exactly. And if they've got good matchups, and that's how they're going to do it. But I'll just sort of touch on because obviously, can I, can I just to yep. bring one word of warning just before we move on to comparisons to other players? But um, I try to listen to as much information, thoughts, data, etc. But you need to make your own calls. But there is some words of warning. So listening to to Hef, who's a strong Port Adelaide supporter, a great supporter of the Port Adelaide coach as well. So he will love that little dig. But um, <laughs> uh, he he talked um, about wines. And thought, yeah, he's got some upside, but thinking his cap's about eighty-five. Uh, I personally don't see that, but I, but I understand people that saw very closely last year thinking he's gone past it. But that's why I say I think we need to put a line through twenty-three, except yeah. that he wasn't at his best. He wasn't prepared the right way. But so there is that cautionary tale that people that see the individual a little bit closely think that the ceiling really isn't there and the the others are taking control and demand. But look, I'm I'm convinced he's he's going to be back. Yeah. And I think if they have a couple of uh if they have a good preseason score or two, then I think they're going to be a lot more teams than than currently what they are. But yeah, we yep. did, obviously with Calvin we did talk about um Matt Crouch and Josh Simpkins. So just sort of start just want you to get your rank um all four of these guys. So obviously Guthrie Wine, Simpkin and Crouch obviously all similarly priced within 100k of each other. So, where would you be ranking um, the others? Just obviously, you got Wines and then Guthrie. How would you put Crouch and Simpkin into that mix? Well, I'll speak about Simpkin first. He's he's the guy that we would call in the draft doctors, and we have a little uh, icon for it in the draft kit. Just a guy. So he's a he's a bit of a jag. And uh, when you've got obviously LDU leading that group, and you've got a host of young kids. Uh, I'm really interested what Simpkins' role is. So I, I don't know where that all lands. I, I did hear talk of LDU doing Fordcraft, and I thought, my God, um, mm. I, don't, I don't know if he's the one you should be taking out. But 
look, maybe they're just upskilling all their players through rotation, so you just don't know. We'll need to see the practice games. Um, Simpkin, yeah, I just don't know really what his ceiling is. I just know he's not the the main go-to, and I think Wardlaw is really going to step up this year, and he may not get the time of ground to be classic sustainable, but I think he's going to be a really good player. And they've got so many um, young players. I mean, even Powell and Phillips seem to be sort of off the radar at the moment. And for many clubs, if those two went to West Coast, they would be straight on their on-ball department. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's it's an interesting one, Simpkin. So I think he's more of an 85 guy to 90. Matt Crouch. Um Everyone's assuming on a two-year contract that he's, you know, just back in the 22 on ball. Um, but, look, if if I was coaching today right now, it's it's Laird, Dawson and Saligo are the starting three. Um, yeah. That's who I'd go. And then the, the mix of the kids with the <coughs> two rock-hard steady players. Um, but... Um, Crouch, uh, they've been there before and they've discarded it before. So yeah, I'm 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 not convinced. And so I've got Guthrie and Wines, but Crouch could be 80% CBAs, have um 42 possessions and an average of 98, sort of before we know it. We don't know. Um, and I know they finished with him last year. I don't know if that was a last ditch attempt to get the senior bods in there because the kids were tiring and the kids have got another pre-season behind their belt so they won't be tiring as much who knows um i've loved him and owned him before um i I just think he's sort of more fringe and depth than he is um starting in the first cba but yeah it's opinion it doesn't mean i'm right yeah yeah i I see because i think Crouch is probably going to start the season anyway, and, and I think the Crows are going to do that because I think it was Laird got injured in round 18 against the Giants, and round 19, Crouch came in and played quite well against Melbourne, and, and he stayed in for, for the rest right. of the season. So I'm sort of thinking that that was – they saw how well he played, and they thought, you've done this all year in the Sanford, you've done it in our AFL, and then he stayed when the Crows were trying to make finals. So it's it's going to be interesting to see. I, I, I could definitely see, as a Crows fan, I'd love to see the likes of Rochelle, Saligo, even ranking for parts in there, um, and Pedler, Pedler as well. Pedler. Yep, yep. I like yeah. Pedler in there. He's, he's good. So um, it'll be interesting to see how that crow's mix goes. But I've currently got it: Wines, Crouch, Guthrie, Simpkin. If I was to rank rank the four, so um, yeah, Crouch goes. I, I just so don't have the fun. confidence that Crouch is the the starting guy. Yeah, yep. Yeah, I agree. I, I think as well he might have less game time. Might be that 70 percent game time instead of being his normal maybe 80 percent, which we. Interesting to see in the preseason anyway. Um, it'll be a good watch for all these four players um, as well. So If he's in, yeah. he scores, and I think Laird scores better. <laughs> so yeah, um, yeah. seeing I'm going to be on Laird, so there's part of me wanting Crouch to be in there, but I, I think you've got to think, um, you've got to think when's Adelaide going to contend? Um, I think they would be hoping two or three years. Um, they've certainly been on oh, improve year. over the last two or three. Um, and if you're going to do that, who's actually playing in your midfield? Yeah, you'd, you'd want those younger guys in there instead of the, the same sort of guys and even a keys as well. He's obviously playing more forward as well. But, yeah, yeah. I'm very interested to see as a Crows fan myself to see how uh, that all unfolds. But uh, currently, just before we uh, wrap it up as well, uh, I currently don't have either in my side, but they've both spent time in my side. So have you got either in your side at the moment? Yes, I certainly have uh, Guthrie and Wines uh, currently. Um, but again, all the practice games and opening round will determine what the the final squad looks like. I'm just trying to get that right balance. So I have um, Carl Amon as well. Um, so he's probably the first one out. Um, yeah. I, I recognise that because I, I, although that's scoring the last five six rounds when he played halfback, uh, was good. Um, how real it is is a question mark. Um, and whether I – I don't want to get sucked in to go, well, defender status at round six would be just a bonus. Um, got to be careful you don't make selections in, in planning what's going to happen DPP. 
Um, I've done that a few times. Um, it's been very rewarding when it happens and it hurts when it doesn't. So sometimes you maybe should react to the announcement rather than react to the planning or the potential. Yeah, yeah, it'll be another uh, interesting watch as well. Um, plenty of uh, stuff to unfold in pre so we're still getting uh, kicked into gear as well. But uh, Soto, mate, thank you very much uh, for jumping on. If you guys uh, did enjoy the video, make sure you do leave a like as well and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Let us know in the comments below if your what your thoughts are on Cam Guthrie, other ones, even Crouch and Simkin as well. Obviously, that was the other video. But if you want to put your thoughts in there again, make sure you do and let us know if you're starting any of these guys in your sides. But Soto, mate, thank you very much. For jumping Pleasure. on this episode, where can the people find you uh, on socials, not only on X, but also uh, on the Draft Doctors and PodPod Pod as well? Yeah, so two podcasts, so I try to keep busy. So PodPod Pod, um, and obviously the uh, old mainstay Draft Doctors, can you believe um, we're, we're in the 10th season, I think it is, uh, doing the Draft Doctors. So it's it's been around for a while. Um, and Pod Pod's been around. I think we're in our third season, um, uh, and also available on Twitter at Statesman Thirty Three. Yeah, make sure you go and give Stato a follow with all the great knowledge and advice. You can find me at Bells DT on uh, Twitter or Instagram, and obviously uh, on YouTube at Trinity Bells HD. So make sure you go and fight across all those. If you're listening to the podcast version of this episode, make sure you do uh, leave us a five star rating and review. That'd be very much appreciated. Helps. Uh, Helps the uh, Fantasy Fanatics out a great deal to get us out to a lot more people as well and get people involved. Uh, so we appreciate everyone's support. So in the next episode, episode 15, we have another member of Pod Pod jumping on for another episode, talking about a couple of forwards that have been heavily discussed as a little bit underpriced, but could be starting as your sort of F2, F3, F4. So make sure you tune into that episode. But until that one, catch you guys then. So we're out. Cheers. <laughs>